Hungarian folk tales. The Hare and the Hedgehog. One sunny summer day, a hare and a hedgehog met in the meadow. The hare began to tease the hedgehog and said, Hey, hedgehog, how can you even walk alone, let run with those stumpy little legs of yours? This upset the hedgehog. Well, I'm sure I can run faster with my little legs than you can run with your lanky long ones. Now the hare was upset. I don't believe that. Well, if you don't believe it, Hare, let's make a wager. So the two of them placed their wagers, and then the Hare said to the Hedgehog, Well then, Hedgehog, shall we race? To this the Hedgehog said, Tomorrow morning, when the eight o'clock train leaves the station. The Hare said, But why not now, Hedgehog? Because I have to go home to eat my supper. Let's meet again here tomorrow morning at eight o'clock sharp. So the hedgehog went home. After they had eaten, the hedgehog told his wife what had happened. Just imagine, I made a wager with the hare that I can run faster than him. The hedgehog's wife said, don't be foolish, how could you possibly run faster than the hare? Well, we'll find that out tomorrow morning. following morning, the hedgehogs got up, ate a hearty breakfast and went out to the meadow. They didn't go to the place where they should meet the hare, but instead stood at the other end of the meadow. Then the hedgehog told his wife to hide herself in a furrow. He told her, when the hare arrives, you are to shout out, I'm already here, hare. Then the hedgehog walked to the far end of the meadow, where he met the hare. Hello there, hare. Hello there, hedgehog. Are you ready to race? Yes, I am. Then shall we run? Yes, let's run. But how shall we run over such a bumpy field? The hedgehog said, it's simple. I shall run in one furrow and you in another. And so we won't bump into each other while we're racing. That sounds like a very good idea. Then the hare stood ready in one furrow and the hedgehog in another. And the hedgehog told the hare, I shall count and when I get to three, we start to run. And then the hedgehog counted. One, two, three. Then they both began to run, but the hedgehog only ran two steps and hid himself deep in the furrow. The hedgehog's wife was sitting waiting at the other end of the meadow when the hare arrived and she shouted, I'm already here, hare. And the hare said, That was no good. Let's race again. Then they turned back and began to run in the opposite direction. But this time the hedgehog's wife only ran two steps and hid herself deep in the furrow. The hare did his best to run faster than he had ever run before. But when the hare arrived back at the beginning of the meadow, the hedgehog said, I'm already here, hare. 
that was no good. Let's race once more. So they turned around and ran back again, but the hedgehog quickly hid in the furrow again. The poor hare ran as fast as his legs would carry him, and when he got to the other end of the meadow, the hedgehog's wife said, I'm already here, hare. <sighs> that was no good, said the hare. Let's run one last time. But the foolish hare felt dizzy and his legs began to tremble. And he stood in the middle of the meadow, too tired to continue. The little hedgehogs laughed at the silly hare. They had won. The pair of them laughed all the way home and they are probably still laughing to this very day. Hungarian Folk Tales The Lad Who Watched Over the Rabbits Once upon a time, very long ago and far away, there lived a king and the king had a daughter, so beautiful that even the painters could not paint her beauty. Now there came a time for her to take a husband and the king said that he would give her in marriage to the man who could catch the apple she threw among them. So they came together, the princes and the dukes, the counts and the gypsy lads to catch the apple. But try as they would, not one of them succeeded. But one day who should turn up but a village lad? Once again the princess flung the apple and the lad caught it as if it had been thrown straight to him. But the king was not overjoyed at this, that a come-and-go-as-he-pleases lad was to be his son-in-law. Well then, young fellow, I don't know what kind of lad you are to catch the apple, but there's another trial in store for you. I have rabbits aplenty, and you have to watch over them. If you can watch them carefully, well and good, but if you can't, then it's off with your head. Now the lad was downcast to hear that he had to watch over the rabbits, for never before had he been a watcher of rabbits. And all of a sudden, an old woman appeared. She said, don't be downcast, young fellow. I shall give you a whistle. And when you go off to the meadow, all you have to do is blow it and you'll see how useful it will be. Then they let the rabbits out and they ran off in a thousand directions. The lad blew his whistle and the rabbits lined up like soldiers on parade. The king looked out and wondered what kind of lad could keep the rabbits in devilish good order. So the king said to his daughter, Listen, daughter dear, dress yourself up as a poor young woman and take a satchel with you to the meadow and ask the lad for a rabbit, so that in the evening when he brings them home, there'll be one rabbit missing. So the princess dressed herself up in the clothes of a poor young woman, put a satchel under her arm and went out to the meadow. Good day to you, good rabbit herd. God save you. What brings you here, young lady? I'm not a lady. I'm just a poor young girl. I came to see if you could give me a rabbit. Of course I can, he said, if your highness will give me a kiss. I'm not a princess, said she. And she was really fierce in denying it because she didn't want the lad to know who she was. But he knew which way the wind was blowing. Well, just one kiss and I'll give you a rabbit. 
So the princess thought for a moment to kiss or not to kiss, but in the end, she gave him a kiss. Right away, the lad took hold of a rabbit and put it in the satchel for her. So she set off home. But she hadn't got halfway home when the lad blew the whistle again and the rabbit jumped out of the satchel and scampered back to him. The princess got home and the king said to her, Well, did you get a rabbit? She looked in the satchel and, sure enough, there was nothing in it at all. So she said to her father, I tried and I asked, but he didn't give me a rabbit, because she was ashamed to say that she had given him a kiss. So the king said, never mind, I'll try. So the king dressed up as a poor country lad and took a satchel and off he went on a donkey to the meadow where the village lad was to be found. When he got there, he said, God save you, young fellow. How goes it with you? Well enough, said the lad. I have the rabbits to watch over. Have pity on me, young fellow, and give me a rabbit, for I'm as poor as poor can be and sick, and I need the meat of a rabbit to give me strength. Willingly, said the lad, if you kiss the tail of your donkey. So the king thought for a moment, and in the end he kissed the tail of the donkey. Well then, the lad gave him a rabbit. The king took the satchel under his arm and sat astride the donkey. But he hadn't got halfway home when the lad blew that whistle of his and the rabbit jumped out of the satchel and left it as empty as the day is long. The king got home, opened the satchel and saw not a rabbit there at all. The princess asked him, Father dear, did you bring a rabbit? Of course I didn't bring one. He wouldn't give me one. Evening came and the king looked out of the window to see how the lad had lined up the rabbits to come home. Like soldiers on parade, in they came and all of them present and correct. Well done, young fellow, said the king. You've done a very good job. You've passed the test. Now there's one more for you, and if you pass that too, then you'll have my daughter as your wife. Now I want you to tell me as many lies as will fit in a sack. So the lad began to think about what lies he could tell. All the king's counsellors sat around in a circle with the lad in the middle and he started to tell lies. Well, he lied and lied about anything and everything that came into his head. But the king called out, the sack's not full yet. Carry on with your lying. So he carried on. Well, you know, when I was looking after the rabbits, the princess came to me and asked for a rabbit and gave me a kiss in return. Well, didn't the princess grow as red in the face as a rose in bloom? She couldn't get over her shame. And after that, said the lad, the king himself came and I told him to kiss the donkeys. It's full, shouted the king. You don't have to say another word. A big sack full of lies. So the lad didn't say another word. And that's how the king gave his daughter to the lad who watched over the rabbits. Together they lived happily and peacefully. And when the king died, the lad became king. His kingdom was so blessed that it's a pity he isn't still living today. And that's the end of my story. Hungarian Folk Tales The Pin, the Dog, the Crayfish, the Egg and the Cockerel Once upon a time, a very long time ago, there was a little pin 
that was very bored in the sewing box. And the little pin thought it would go out and see the world. The pin walked and walked, and as it was walking along, it met a dog, and the dog said, Where are you going, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go with you too. Please do. They walked and walked, and as they were walking, they met a crayfish. The crayfish said, Where are you going to, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go with you too. Please do. They walked and walked and they were walking along when they met a rotten egg. The egg said, Where are you going, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the wide world. Then I shall go with you too. Please do. They walked and walked and they were walking when they met a cockerel. The cockerel said, Where are you going to, friend? Why, I'm going out to see the world. Then I shall go too. Please do. They walked and walked until they arrived in the back of beyond and night began to fall around them and the sky grew dark. The four of them looked for a place to lay their heads for the night but they found themselves in a vast forest and searched and searched for a place to sleep. Then they caught sight of a cottage where they decided to go and ask for shelter. They walked into the cottage but found that it was empty inside. It doesn't matter that no one's at home, we can still sleep here for the night. And each found a place to lay its head. The pin stuck into a towel, the egg rolled into the ashes, the crayfish sat in the wash basin, the cockerel roosted on top of the fence, and the dog lay down on the shady porch. Then they all fell fast asleep because they were tired from all the walking they had done that day. The cottage was owned by three foxes that had gone down into the town to steal chickens from farms as the darkness descended. Now the three foxes came running home. As they ran, twigs cracked under their feet and the cockerel heard them approaching and crowed a warning to its friends. The foxes stopped for a second when they heard the crowing, but then they ran quickly on. Then the dog took notice and began to bark. The foxes stopped again when they heard the dogs barking. What could be happening at the cottage, they thought. But then they carried quickly on. When the foxes arrived, the cockerel crowed, the dogs snapped at their heels, but they carried quickly on into the cottage. But a terrible surprise still awaited them. The father fox said to its son, quickly go and look for a coal in the ashes, that we can light a lamp and see what's happening in the cottage. One of the fox's sons went to the fireplace and sorted through the ashes. But the egg blew up in the fox's face, so it ran to the basin for water where the crayfish lay that pinched the fox hard. It tried and tried to shake the crayfish from its paw. It grabbed the towel to dry itself and the pin pricked it sharply. Run away! We need to run from this terrible place! And the foxes ran and ran and ran away and may still be running till this very day.
Hungarian folk tales. The Golden Lamb. Once upon a time, there lived a poor man and his son. When the boy grew up, his father sent him away to work and earn some money. Off he went and searched for a place where he could work until he finally found a farmer who hired him as a shepherd for his sheep. The next day, his new master handed him a flute and sent him out with a flock to see if he knew what to do. Unlike the other lazy shepherds, the young lad never rested for a minute and herded the sheep and played the flute all day long. Among the sheep was a lamb with a golden fleece. Whenever the young lad played his flute, it began to dance. The boy grew to like the lamb so much, he decided to ask for the golden lamb instead of wages. As night fell, he took the flock home. The farmer stood waiting for him at the gate, and when he saw that none of his precious sheep had gone astray and all had eaten well, he was a happy man indeed. The boy and his master began to debate his wages. The lad said he would like the golden lamb. The master liked the little animal very much, but eventually agreed to let the boy have it because he was willing to work very hard. A whole year passed by. The boy worked well for his master and was given the lamb as his prize. He set off home, but it began to get dark just as he walked into a village. The shepherd boy eventually sought shelter with a farmer who had a daughter who fell so in love with the golden lamb that she decided to steal the animal for herself. It was nearly midnight by the time the girl got her hands on the lamb, but as soon as she touched it, her hands stuck to its golden fleece. The boy woke the next morning and saw the young girl with her hands stuck to the lamb. He did not want to leave the lamb behind, so off he set with the lamb and the girl with her hands stuck to its golden fleece. The three of them danced until they reached the third neighbor's house, where a woman poked her head out and saw the young girl dancing and prancing with the lamb. She rushed outside with her oven shovel and shouted, Get back home with you and stop making such a scene. The woman smacked her with the shovel. I said to do as you were told. But the girl carried on dancing, so the woman hit her with her shovel. But it stuck to her behind, with the woman on the other end. The lamb pulled them both through the village, all the way to the church. The lamb started to dance with the girl stuck to its fleece, who had the shovel stuck to her behind, and the woman on the end. The priest was just returning from the church and scolded them bitterly for making such a scene, but to no avail. The priest took his stick and struck the woman's behind with it and was surprised to see that his stick stuck to the woman's fat bottom and he was glued to the other end. The boy continued to trail them through the village where a soldier passed with his horse. He touched the priest and got stuck too. Then a weaver came out with a roll of linen. He smacked the horse's flank and the linen stuck to it in an instant. Then a cobbler appeared with his hands full of boots. He hit the weaver and cried, what are you staring at? And he too now was stuck to the procession. The boy blew on his flute and the lamb went on dancing with the girl stuck to its behind, the shovel stuck to her bottom, the woman to the handle of the shovel, the stick to her far bottom, with the priest stuck to the other end, followed by the soldier leading the horse, with the linen stuck to its flank, the weaver stuck to the linen, with the boots on his back, and the cobbler at the very end. And the boy just went on marching with his peculiar parade until he reached a town where everyone was in mourning. The houses and palaces were all covered in black and the men and women were walking about in black clothes. At the edge of the town, the boy began talking to an old woman and asked her what had happened. The old woman sadly told him that the daughter of the king was seriously ill and no medicine was strong enough to cure her. The doctors all said that if someone could make her laugh, she would soon be cured, but no one had managed to do it yet. The king declared that anyone who could make his darling daughter laugh could marry her and receive half of his kingdom as a gift of thanks. Of course, there were many people who all wanted to try their luck. Princes, counts and acrobats from all kinds of nations and nationalities, but no one succeeded. 
No matter how hard they tried, the princess never even smiled, and they all ended up with their heads impaled on a pole. The next morning, the boy announced that he intended to make the princess laugh. The king was happy to hear the news and asked his daughter to stand outside. The young shepherd began to play his flute. The golden lamb went on dancing with the girl stuck to its fleece, with the shovel on her behind, and the woman stuck to the shovel, the stick on her fat bottom, with the priest stuck to the other end, followed by the soldier with his horse, with the linen stuck to its flank, the weaver stuck to the linen, with boots on his back, and the cobbler at the end of the line. When the princess saw this, she burst out laughing, and that made the golden lamb so happy that it shook everything and everyone off and began to dance alone. And then the girl began to dance, and then the woman, and then the priest, and then the soldier with his horse, and then the weaver, and even the cobbler. The king happily gave his blessing for the shepherd boy to marry his daughter. He gave the weaver and the cobbler royal warrants. He made the soldier his general and the priest his royal cardinal. The woman was promoted to royal baker and the girl became the princess's maid. The wedding feast went on for a week and a day and the whole kingdom celebrated the bride and groom. If the violin strings hadn't snapped, they would all still be dancing. There once lived a peasant who found a giant pumpkin in the meadow. What on earth could this be, he thought. So he bent down, lifted the giant pumpkin up, felt it and smelt it, but he still had no clue what it was. So he took the pumpkin to the village council. The councillors were in the middle of an important meeting when the farmer walked in and plonked the giant pumpkin on the table. And this surprised them all. I have lived a very long life, but I have never seen anything like that before. I have experienced a lot in my life, but I have never come across anything like that before. And I'm not a young man either, but I really couldn't tell you what on earth that is. Then the village mayor added wisely, Gentlemen, this peculiar object, judging by its shape, cannot be anything else but an egg. Of course, what else could it be? It must be an egg. The peasant agreed and added that the egg-like object had been warm when he first found it. The local mayor had a very clever mind and so he wanted to know exactly what kind of egg this might be.
the old village leaders thought it could possibly be a terrible green dragon's egg. However, the mayor was inclined to agree with a farmer who said that he had recently seen a strange horse in the very same meadow. The village leaders liked the sound of this and said, it must be so, nothing other than a horse could have laid such a giant egg. Good, so tell me my friends, what should we do next? Why? You must catch it of course. Yes, but what animal could do it? All horses don't lay eggs, so they could never hatch it. Everyone thought hard what to do, but then the mayor had an idea. Gentlemen of the council, if the local horses are too stupid to hatch an egg, then we the village council should do it. We, gentlemen, must hatch the giant egg. That's what I say. This sounded like a wonderful idea and everyone nodded in agreement. The village mayor decided to set an example and so he was the first to sit on the giant egg. And then the gentlemen of the council followed one after the other. And they would all be still sitting on it today if the people in the next village had not spread the rumour that it had gone bad under their bottoms. When they heard this, the local leaders protested and refused to sit on the egg for a day longer. This made the mayor very sad because he said he was sure he had felt the horse moving inside it. But the village leaders were convinced the egg was rotten and it smelled very bad. But each stuck to their own side of the story. voted and decided to take the egg to the top of a hill and roll it down onto the people of the village below who had teased them so. The men, women and children of the village all walked up to the top of a nearby hill and prepared to punish their neighbours with the stinking egg. Everyone pinched their noses and the mayor began to roll the egg and the giant egg rolled down and rolled down the hill until it rolled into the bushes at the bottom. This is where it broke in two, just as a rabbit ran out of the bushes. And all the villagers cried out, There goes the horse! Come on, let's catch it! And they all gave chase to the rabbit. Only the mayor stayed standing on top of the hill and muttered sadly to himself, I told them that something was moving inside. We should have had the patience to sit on the egg for another day and it would have grown into a fine, strong horse. <laughs>
Hungarian folk tales. King Matthias and the Lamb with the Golden Fleece. The King of Prussia went to see King Matthias. They greeted each other as old friends, and the King of Prussia said, I heard that you have a lamb with a golden fleece. It is true, among the many sheep in my flocks, I have a lamb with a golden fleece, and I have a shepherd who never tells a lie. To this the King of Prussia replied, I will prove to you that you are wrong, for your shepherd does not always speak the truth. This I will not believe, said King Matthias, for my shepherd never lies. I will prove to you that he does, for I will trick him, so that he must. To this King Matthias replied, I am so certain of his honesty that I will give you half my kingdom if he lies. The King of Prussia replied, and I will give you half of mine if he does not. So they shook hands and bid each other good night and the King of Prussia returned to his inn. There he changed his clothes into peasants' rags and went to work in the fields. Meekly he greeted the shepherd and the shepherd replied, Welcome, the Lord's blessing be on you, my king. How do you know I am a king? The shepherd replied, I know from your words you are a king. To this the king of Prussia replied, I will shower you in golden coins. I will give you six horses and the finest carriage if you give me the lamb with the golden fleece. Oh, I could not do that, not for all the gold in the world, for King Matthias would have me hanged. The king of Prussia promised him riches and jewels, but the shepherd did not give in. The King of Prussia returned to his inn, hanging his head in sorrow. His daughter saw this and said, Do not be sad, father. I will go myself, and I will take a coffer of gold coins and trick him myself. So the King's daughter took a coffer full of gold and a bottle of sweet wine with which to trick the shepherd. But the shepherd only answered that he had no need of money, and King Matthias would surely hang him if he lost the lamb with the golden fleece. But the girl persisted, and soon they had drunk the wine, though she had had to have the first sip to prove to him that she had not poisoned the wine. The shepherd was soon in such high spirits that he said he would give her the lamb with the golden fleece if she would spend the night with him. But he had no need of riches or gold, for he had riches enough. The girl did not hesitate, and she agreed to lie down with the shepherd. Then she said to him, Skin the lamb and eat its meat, for I have no need of it. I need only its fleece. Brimming with joy, the girl took the fleece back to her home. Her father was overjoyed that his daughter had managed to trick the shepherd. But morning came, and the shepherd was very sad, for he did not know what to say to his king. And as he walked, he stuck his crook in a hole in the ground, hung his hat on its end, stepped back and greeted it as if it were the king. The king, or rather the shepherd's hat, asked, What news do you bring me from the fields? To this the shepherd replied, No news at all, except that the lamb with the golden fleece is gone, for it was eaten by a wolf. And the shepherd shook with fear. You lie, for the wolf would have eaten the rest of the flock as well. The shepherd took his crook under his arm 
and set off again towards the castle. He ambled and rambled along and he soon came across another hole in the ground, where he stuck his crook in the hole and hung his hat on the end and greeted the figure of the king. What news do you bring me from the fields? No news at all, except that the lamb with the golden fleece stumbled into the well and drowned. You lie, said the king, for the others would have drowned too. So the shepherd carried on until he found a third hole in the ground where he stuck his crook in the hole and hung his hat on the other end and for the third time he greeted the figure of the king. What news do you bring me from the fields? No news at all, except that the lamb with the golden fleece has been stolen. You lie, said the king, for the others would have been stolen too. So for the third time he took his crook from the ground and continued on his way to the castle of King Matthias. In the castle the king was seated at the table together with the king of Prussia and his daughter. The shepherd humbly approached and greeted the two kings and the girl. But the king of Prussia had already given King Matthias the fleece of the golden lamb and now all three were waiting to see if the shepherd would lie or tell the truth. For if he lied, King Matthias would lose half his kingdom. King Matthias asked, what news do you bring me from the fields? No news at all, except that I exchanged the lamb with a golden fleece for a beautiful black sheep. King Matthias was overjoyed, but he replied, Bring this black sheep to me. But the shepherd answered, She is sitting right there between the two kings. Well done, said King Matthias for you have told no lies, and today I give you half of the lands belonging to the King of Prussia. And I shall give you my daughter's hand in marriage, said the King of Prussia, for you already know the taste of each other's lips. And this is how King Matthias Shepherd rose to become the King of Prussia. Hungarian Folk Tales Angel Lambs Once there lived a very poor man on the edge of the forest in his little hut with his wife and three sons. He earned his bread by cutting wood. Poor they were and their life was hard. One day the man was working in the forest and had become very tired. He took out his satchel to eat the scone his wife had baked him in the ashes of the fire. While he was chewing away on his food, there came an old man. What are you doing here, poor man? Just cutting some wood. What's that you're eating? Nothing special, just a scone baked in the ashes. Won't you have a little for yourself? Listen, my man, have you a family? Three sons, but they're still small. I need someone to serve me. I have a flock of sheep and it needs to be watched over. Give me your eldest son into service. Three days he will work and a hundred florins he will earn. Now the poor man went home very pleased and said to his son, Listen, my boy, tomorrow you'll come with me to the forest and there you'll meet an old man who will take you into service. In the morning, his mother packed his satchel and off he went with his father to the forest. Hardly had they arrived when the old man came. He took the boy by the hand and led him away with him. Now they went deep into the forest until night fell. Then they came to a hut. Now, son, here we are. Daylight came, the boy went out, and there he saw the fine flock of sheep. This is the flock you are to watch over. Here's a staff for you to follow my lambkins. Here's a satchel for you so that you can bring back in it to me some of what they eat. And in it there's a flask for you to fill with whatever they drink from. 
So the lambs set off and made their way into the forest. The further they went in, the darker it became. Then they found a wide river before them and there was only a narrow plank to cross the river. The sheep set off but their weight was such as to bend the plank until their bellies were in the water itself. Now this worried the lad. I'll never be able to cross on that plank, it'll collapse under me. The last of the lambs came to rub against his leg. Just climb onto my back and I'll take you across. But the boy struck its back roughly with the staff, lay on his stomach, in the grass and waited. Some time later he heard the sound of their bells as they came back. The last of them came to him and rubbed against his leg. Follow us. Then his master's request came to his mind. He gathered together a handful of grass for the satchel, put some water into the flask and followed the flock home. When they arrived, the old man was waiting for them in his yard. So, my boy, I see you've brought my lambkins home. Are they still all here? Yes, master. Did you bring what they ate? Yes, master. Did you bring what they drank? That too, master. Let me have a look. No, my boy, that's not what they ate. That's not what they drank, for these lambs of mine cannot live on this. You didn't do your proper service. Tomorrow, I'll take your next brother. But his younger brother didn't fare any better, for he did exactly the same with the old man's flock. At home, the poor man spoke to the youngest of his sons. Son, it's your turn. Tomorrow, you'll come with me to the forest. The next day, the old man was waiting for them. He took the boy by the hand and led him into the forest until it got dark. Here, my boy, is where you will sleep. In the morning, the old man came to knock on the door. The boy hung the satchel around his neck and sat off after the sheep. The sheep walked and walked along the edge of the forest. Once they went into the forest, everything got dark. In the middle of the forest, it was so dark that the youngest boy was gripped by fear. All the more when they came to the river. Oh, what will become of me if I cross the river as well? One of the lambs came to rub against the boy's leg. Child, sit on my back. So the boy sat on its back and that's how they crossed the river. Once they were across, they went further and further into the dark until suddenly there was a great brightness in front of them. The boy had to rub his eyes for there in the middle of the brightness was a chapel. The sheep quickly filed in. Once he was in, he saw the sheep shake themselves twice in front of the altar and change into angels. From a beautiful chalice, they served themselves each bread and a little wine. Then they shook themselves once again and turned back into sheep. The last of them to turn into an angel had taken the boy's satchel, then took bread, poured some wine into his flask and put both into his satchel before setting off with the others towards home. When they reached the river, the boy got onto the sheep's back again, crossed over the plank and set off home tranquilly. The old man was waiting for them in the yard. Now, child, are all the sheep here? All here, master. Have they eaten? They have, master. Have they drunk? They have, master. Well then, show me your satchel and your flask. My child, I can see that you have served me faithfully, and so I grant you a wish as well as the hundred florins you have earned. And that was when the boy knew that the old man was the Lord himself, and the lambs, his angels. So what he said was this, Master, I would like to serve you always. My only wish is to be allowed to go home once to my parents to bid them farewell. And that is what happened. Home he went, bade goodbye to his father, his mother and his two brothers, handed over to them his wages and returned to the old man, whom he still serves to this very day.